a uh, few more candidates to join. Yes, sir, you can start. You can start. Okay, fine. So welcome to guys to the meta exam part three. Uh, so it's a kind of you all you guys know at this moment that how many modules are there. Now it's not uh, possible for me in a single free session to give you an idea of every module, but I will give you in this in a surgical module and a post of completion modules how the examiners organize this module and what they expect it from you. In part three examination, it's very important to understand what examiners want you from you. Okay, it doesn't matter how much you know, it doesn't matter how much you can show also. This, the matter of the most important thing in the surgical module is that, are you able to work as a team member in the NHS setup? That is the main important thing. So be careful whenever it's giving, what is your role? Most of time they give you as a ST5 candidate because in the UK, that is the time you are giving the part two or part three examination. Okay. I hope I made this point very clear because this is a kind of thing you should be understanding at what role you are, because many of time the overseas candidate are what happens is that uh, many of you are maybe consulted, many of you are doing resident or have completed so like they try to manage everything themselves, but that's how it doesn't work in UK. Okay, so let's begin. Before I begin, I just wanted to share of myself. Uh, I passed my MRCOG in 2021 exam, and I also did the European board specialty of that. And also I got the European Fellowship of Reparative Medicine from ASHRAE in 2023 as well. Uh, I do private practice for the fertility mostly in the reproductive medicine, but I am uh, certified. I do paper setup in the Europe EBCOG examination in the part two. And I have working with the RCOG as well for the preparation of the part three courses, like in Cowden courses as well. Uh, for me, MRCOG part three was the simplest one after the part two was the difficult one. I think most of you guys has been similar like that. Uh, and you guys have been preparing, I hope so. I will let's see how my, you guys are be preparing. And most important thing is the for part three is to the organize yourself and give the accurate information what we need. For me, part three examination, I cleared almost all domain and same good mass. Also, I think I got around 70, 8%. So I think I will be helping you guys to beat me. If you guys are learning for me, I want all of you to score more than that. Okay. So you should not get at least less than that. Okay. So everybody, right, Fu? Because you are the only candidate I have seen you are giving the examination at moment. Is anyone else is giving part three examination this November coming month? Hello? Come on, I want every one of you to speak up. Shying won't be helpful because this is the time you should open up yourself. You should clear all your doubts. You can ask me anything about. I Today I may be covering few, two uh, topics of the uh, surgical module, but you can ask me anything. Please feel free. That's the most important thing. So I cannot have an interaction. Why is everyone so silent? Okay, so you have raised hand, Dubai's has been raised hand. Okay, so you, you are also giving part three examination, that's that means? Okay, fine. So today I will go to talk, discuss about the two important modules. That is the score surgical skills and post-operative care module. This is the two modules. Module one is the teaching, and this module two and module three are also a very important one, although they are also very easiest one and also very, very easy to score also. But I don't know, sometimes students or candidates may slip up also in these stations. And remember, these are the things where two things can happen. One is the important thing is that you may get a structured discussion. And another is thing is that the, you have an station with a lay examiner as well, especially if you are having dealing with the post-operative complication cases. 
that is a usually happily examiner also inside sim okay i think all of you guys at uh, this moment know about the how the mrcog works part 3 examination work what types of stations are there and what are the examination criteria are all of you aware of that please raise hand or give me some hints so that i can understand you guys are uh, getting it still i don't have any response mm -hmm. okay let's move on then so remember the two modules are very important and very very scoring uh, these two usually everyone passes but sometimes uh, the stations may get tricky also most often the, these are the most often uh, stations have been cast come in the past years like in cesarean section most of time they give with associated pathologies mostly in the like in cases of previa or placenta accreta spectrum they also give a uh, station related to the vaginal hysterectomy or abdominal hysterectomy or a station related to the laparoscopy, especially with an ectopic pregnancy or ovarian cystectomy, like dermoid cystectomy. And sometimes you may get an injury like bowel injury and urinary injury cases as well. These are the very, very commonly asked station and you guys should be thoroughly preparing it and has come in many, many times in the past and will come in coming months also. And the complication related topics are usually, you have to get to know what are the complications can happen. These are mostly comes as a structured discussion. How do you understand what complication that happens? What are the risks and how will you conduct and post-operative management and also how we'll uh, fill up the incident reporting. That scam can come also. And another very, very important thing when you are dealing with this such a post-operative complications, you need to communicate with every colleagues of you, your consultant, associated, maybe general surgeon or neurosurgeon. Also remember you must com uh, must have a connection or communication with your general practitioner also. Okay, please don't miss this communication part. This is very important in NHS working system. Now, what I was saying in that is a very important thing is that the post-operative care, remember, in whatever you are practicing or where you are practicing, because I guess most of you are, are from the overseas. So in NHS, you are as a team member you are working as a team you are not alone in nhs and you are not alone managing the patient you should know what is your role what should you do what should you should not do also and what is your limitation as an st5 you what things you can perform and what things you cannot perform that is a very important to understand what are the roles of st5s and what they can do and what they can't so in NHS, as a team member, you should be working. You what the, you should be able to do miss uh, normal routine surgeries, not complicated surgeries, normal laparoscopic surgeries. Few things you can do under consultant supervisions like ectopic pregnancy or maybe some more critical surgeries like that. And you should be aware of very, very important is the preoperative and postoperative management. In preoperative, usually the stations come as a round. Either you have to give a preoperative round or a postoperative round with a consultant. They give usually a four to eight patients in a row. Like in labor ward management, this, uh, they also give provide some eight station and you have to organize the stations. So try to prepare these stations as well. In the recent year, these type of stations are coming more frequently. Hello. Oh, hello. Yes, please. Please go on. Who's that? Hello. Do you have any doubt? 
Hello. Okay, so I think it's okay. Now remember another very important thing is that when you are dealing with the post-operative care, don't forget these three things what I'm going to say. That is the post-operative management and referring back to GP or community setup that you should not miss. And you should not forget for debriefing. That is a very important concept in UK. And also you should not forget to have an incident reporting form fill up or what complication happening for risk analysis or root cause analysis. Often candidates forget these three things. These three things is very important for patient safety point. And this is the where the student gets failed. So kindly remember these three things whenever you are dealing with any post-operative care, post-operative management, or any complication after surgery like patients, do uh, keep in back of your mind these three points. Don't forget it. If you forget these three things, you definitely may not score uh, optimally in your exam. Okay. So before I begin, what is the thing? Like whenever you are in a dealing with a surgical patient or as a uh, ST5 or as a resident doctor or a registrar, when if most often the stations will even you like it that way that you are meeting for the first time with the patient. So be careful that when you are entering, review the reports and confirm the patient name, age, their NHS number, and build the repo is very important. With that, before you do anything in such kind of stations and ask the information what you need to know, what isn't given in the your station briefing. Please don't ask the same things what has been given in the briefing that will only kill your time. I often see that they have uh, discussed, they discussed the post-operative notes. They don't need to know the post-operative notes. You just directly get to the point what they should be knowing. Okay, many of time given post-operative notes are given in the briefing, but should candidates starts to discuss those things, what happens in the operation, they don't need to know. They need to know what happens, why has happened, and what should be they are doing to manage, what is the management of it. So information processing is very crucial. And before you begin, please try to be careful. What is the current situation of the patient or patient relatives? Please try to check that part as well, because you have to manage the immediate complications that moment, and then you go to the other uh, consideration points. And whatever the decision you are doing, have to be informed to the patient, not to the patient's husband. That is a very important thing as well. Okay. And these things you all know, what is how the information, what is how the examination scores. Uh, if the standards are not met, you will be get zero. If the standards are partly met, you will be get one. And if the standards are met, you will get two. It's as simple as that. And most often the candidates in the post-surgical modules, in the communication with colleague and the patient safety, they don't meet the criteria. So this is the area where you should be careful. Okay, so those who are giving the part three examination, be careful with this two uh, domain because it, this is the where the surgical modules candidates fumble or sometimes they actually miss. I don't say they don't know it but they do get missed and because they don't organize themselves, that's why they miss. So after this, I'll be having two stations and I'll be giving you some points how you should get organized with yourself. One is a structured discussion and one is a patient stimulated scenario. So who will be doing the station with me? Uh, who will be volunteer? I need anyone. Can I do, sir? Okay, Anjuma. 
Yes, sure. Oh, sure. So are you ready? Yes, sir. You know the you know the drill. You will get two minutes. Okay, before starting your station and then 10 minutes. Okay, you know the drill, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so should I begin? Okay, sir. Sir, I can see the screen. Yeah, sure. Can you see the station? Uh, it is smaller. Uh, it, is it more smaller? I think I am in a full screen mode. Is it smaller in, are you using your phone? Yes, sir. So can you just rotate your phone? I think that will be helpful because I am in full screen mode. Is it everyone can see it? Hello? Sir, I can't see the station. It is okay. Now you can share. Can you scroll? Can I you see can read it? Okay, now I can yeah. read it. Okay, sir, next. You have done already? Oh, that's very fast. Is there others, any other slide? No, dear. This is only two slides. Okay, you want I to see the ahead? first one again? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Can I again go to the second or? I think your time has just up. Oh. Oh. Okay. Have you completed it? Uh, yeah. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah. I am begin. Hello, I am Anjuman, one of the doctor in exam. Uh, I am ready to start the discussion. Okay, very good. Have you gone through the cases, case scenario yet? Yes, uh, I oh. have gone through the case scenario and uh, the scenario says that a patient uh, has undergone laparoscopic hysterectomy 24 hours back and there is some, there is some vitals. 
So, okay, what would be your initial response to this patient? Uh, from the uh, from the above scenario, which says that patient pulse is increasing as well as her respiratory rate and BP is decreasing, so I we can say that she is in shock. So I will at first act, uh, uh, activate the shock management protocol and I, I call for help and send blood for grouping, cross matching, and uh, it's electrolyte as well as general function test. Inform my consultant. Start IV fluid with about two, uh, three point five liter um, with two liter crystalloid and one liter is colloid. Uh, one point five liter is colloid. Then I uh, I will measure serum lactate within six hours, and uh, so, and I after that after I will monitor the patient so, and I will inform the after that I. I will take brief history. I go through our operative notes, pre-operative notes, and uh, uh, and uh, immediate her POS chart of last uh, what has happened to know to know what has happened. Anything else you want to add in this? Uh, among the uh, from the above scenario, my first diagnosis has uh, some may be some kinds of intra-abdominal hemorrhage. Or patient may be in high, there is fluid, or uh, 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 there may be some dehydration or due to fluid management. Okay, stop. Uh, what is the possible hello? reason? Yeah, I have said you to stop. Okay, examine. Okay. okay, what is the possible reasons for our vital signs to so, such kind of? What are the conditions you think can happen? Uh, my first my first diagnosis is uh, intra terminal hemorrhage, intra hemorrhage, or uh, later on there may patient may be dehydrated due to some post operative vomiting, or after there are some kinds of fluid imbalance for which her pulse is rising and uh, BP is falling. And as she has not passed even in last six years, I will also suspect that it may be a cause of urinary tract injury also. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, uh, I, I would also there, like to include uh, some uh, drug allergy or nephrotoxic drug for which th these are the allergic hypersensitive re reaction. These are the reason I would like to add. Uh, oh, I would like very... to consider. Okay. What would be your management to this patient? Uh, after initial management, I would like go through her pre-operative uh, notes. So what is what was her initial diagnosis and what was her, her what was the condition? Why for which she need to me she need to go to the immediate history yeah. to me. And uh, later on, uh, um, if there is any other medical condition like high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, or urinary tract infection, are there? Her cervical condition, cervical screening status, and her dehydration, or also her if there is any allergy or not. Later on, I would like to go her operative notes, and it was said that it was a straightforward. And I also like to go either WHO surgical checklist or followed or not. And uh, uh, later on, uh, 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 go to our immediate post operative period. How what was our immediate urinary output and what was our initial condition? After going all through this, I would like to do some blood test as a blood grouping. If it is not done earlier, then there's a hemoglobin percentage, our renal function test, serum electrolyte as well. And I will also arrange some scan, especially ultrasonic if needed, ultrasonograph of whole abdomen. And, uh, all, and if needed, there will be some advanced scan uh, like MRI or CT scan. If I suspect there is a urinary tract injury, then I would like to go to a CT urogram or a CT urogram. Uh, I, I will also send urinary. Uh, okay, these are the all after the initial, after the investigations, if there is any uh, management, will be the according to the cause. If there is intra abdominal hemorrhage, I will ask the consult, my consultant about this. And she may need to reopen. At the same time, I will also inform the patient about the condition, about her condition that she is bleeding inside, and she may need to reopen again. And it is emergency. 
and after that uh, uh, after the uh, laparotomy i uh, should be done and initial bleeding point should be secured and if uh, there is dehydration then i uh, it should be again balanced it should but the uh, proper fluid replacement should be done if we suspect urinary tract injury then i will inform urologist and my consultant as well and do accordingly the after the these are the things I would like to do for management of the patient. Okay, so how will you deal with the clinical governance issue in her condition? Uh, at first, uh, this is an unexpected condition for all of us. That I would like to apologize at first to the patient and patient patient sister that these things have happened and I sorry uh, that we are uh, sorry after that I will uh, the deep brief about what has happened and by the same time I will document everything from chronologically what including the chronologically and I will initiate incident reporting to find out the cause why these things happened also inform the risk management team so that we can do cause analysis and find out find out uh, later on after whatever the report result i will inform the patient to as everything as my duty of control and it discuss the result also in the clinical meeting so that we can learn so, and these things may not repeat in future Okay, dear. So you have two minutes, 40 seconds left. If you wish to add anything in any of the four questions, you can do right more now. Remember in the real exam, it will be a very long time. Um, I would like to go to the number one, but the initial response, the this thing up at, after the management that the, of the uh, initial risk after the set uh, at at number question one uh, I have asked did say call for help and at, after the initial management uh, resuscitation of the patient uh, then I will be to mobilize the inform the uh, sir I am being haphazard here. Don't say that to the examiner. But it is, yes, sir. These are the things, and yeah. it should be patient should be managed on multidisciplinary team care approach, like involvement of consultant, anesthesia, intensive care mm -hmm. specialist, and a specialized nurse will be there. And if there is, and after the initial laparotomy of our fluid resuscitation, we should also careful about her postoperative management. She should be an intensive care unit as well as with multidisciplinary team care approach. And the, we should follow, we should take care of her frequently and oral fluid re established when our vital sign was stable and the proper painkiller and the proper HT prophylaxis and proper antibiotic to prevent infections. These are the things. Uh, so we have 40 seconds still left. It's okay, sir. I have nothing to say more. So should we begin the review? Yes, I sir. think time has been up now. And so before I begin, how do you feel? Uh, Anjuman, do a dear, are you uh, re revising yourself? How are you preparing? Actually, I wanted to know. Actually, sir, are you, I am. Are you giving exam like... this exam this uh, coming November? Yes, sir. I am actually. Okay. I have prepared to give the exam in November, but I am now running after visa. My visa is still not in hand yet. So what I can say. So, let uh, let me uh, uh, okay first uh, uh, please go ahead yourself please review yourself first I want you to review yourself how did you do? Uh, okay regarding the station actually they uh, 
is it a very simple station and frequently come this kind of station do frequently come in in mrcpi it more frequently come i think mrcpi and evcog it's more frequently come than mrcog also yeah so how do you think you have done in this exam in this station i did Sorry. not do well i am little bit haphazard actually uh, little bit okay maybe more yeah look it is a structured discussion and you will see these things okay these things you will see definitely communication with colleague patient family please be careful which domains you have been testing in this remember in the structured discussion you will be not be given all five domains in the testing okay in what happens in the real examination are uh, usually we get four or five uh, like each domain, they will be giving a key, like four to five keys, which I, we have two examiners will check and tick it then and that okay, moment so. when the examiner's examination is going on. If you got all the five or four points correct, you will be given full marks, two out of two. If you got less than three, then it will be given one. And if you got less only one or no, you will be given zero. It's as okay. simple as that. Examiners don't do anything by their own because this all your examination will be recorded and it can be reviewed and all it can be challenged also sometime okay but usually uh don't but uh maybe examiner don't it doesn't matter how you have given and whether how you should present yourself that's more important so you that is a good thing that you have understood that you have been haphazard now why there you are even haphazard that's the thing i wanted to know from you for the thing, what is the reason behind it? We both so now have come to know that you had me have that, but what is the reason behind it? Actually, the reason is nothing. Maybe it is stress due to exam stress is a cause. That's why. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, it's very stressful. I forget that. But you need to be confident, right? You need to show that you are confident. That's a very important thing. And uh, try to speak up more clearly and more fluently, little bit. Uh, that doesn't matter, but uh, it gives the examiners, examiners should not miss anything. That is very important also, what you are saying. Are you able to get that? Anjuma, are you there with me? Hello. Hello. Is she with me? Uh, okay. So anyone else like to tell me what are the things that should be more organized, how you should approach this station. So no one is telling. Anjuma dear, are you there? Um, I think she has been disconnected or someone missing. We should, uh, I'll wait for a few half a minute so she can join, rejoin. Yes, sir, I have joined. Okay, yeah. So, dear, what things, why, I wanted to know, ask, you should be give your reflection to the what, what mistakes you are doing because uh, exam is kind of knocking your door at a moment, okay. If you are giving the coming exam in coming month. So, uh, I want this to be presented better because uh, this is a very clear-cut station and you should be scoring almost full out of this okay and this is a structured discussion i have just given exactly the reason what you are been facing because of this reason purpose only how to get organized yourself only for that purpose i have put this station because structured discussion is 
always been about how organizedly you present. Okay. Yes. Because in the examination checkpoint, that things will be given only. Do you, are you covering these points or not? Okay. Sir. So what is the reason behind you think uh, why you're not organized? Mm. Well, let me ask, let question. me let me reframe your question like that. Well, you have been given two minutes and why I remember that you are being very fast also uh, regarding reading these things. Have you organized that time when you are in the reading the station? What questions can be time? Sir, everyone said that every time management due to time management. You need so to you have plenty of time. time during in the station, okay. you have completed almost two and a half minutes earlier. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you already finished two and a half minutes before. So you do have time, right? Are you able to get yeah. that? Okay. So it's very important for structure discussion should to prepare yourself. It's a, usually they will ask a very simple questions from the given scenario. Most often, if it is a surgical scenario, they will ask what is will be the immediate management, what will be the risk alternatives you can do, what are the post after the next management, next steps of management, and the debriefing or uh, later clinical governance uh, things they can ask. In the most of the any of the structured discussion, the questions are usually very simple and very clear cut questions they will ask. They will never ask anything difficult or anything. Else. So be careful and I will ask again, stress you to read the what are the domains you have been asked, assessing. So be careful, watch that before you are entering again. Because it is that this you need to focus on these areas only. Because this is like information gathering is not there. So review you are telling, reviewing notes, reviewing that thing again and again. So they are not, there is no examiner can't won't mark anything they don't have anything to mark in the information gathering are you able to get that yeah but without knowing how could i manage the patient okay okay yeah i get that coming to that so these are your questions is the initial response how we'll do it so how you think you have should have been re, re, started how should you should be starting I have said that uh, uh, the patient is mm -hmm. in shock and you should activate the shock management protocol. Mm -hmm. And okay. later on, uh, yeah, I did not go to the details that uh, at first management talk shop was my first priority, like uh, ABC approach yes. as well. Yes, 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 that's one thing. So you know everything, right? So. Remember, in the NHS setup, you will be like this type of, like her sister has been called you. Okay, like I want you guys, all of you guys to imagine the scenario. Your sister has been informed, her, uh, the patient's sister asked that her, she is concerned about her vitals. She will be informing some sister or uh, sister and they will be calling you. Okay, immediately they will call you and you will be come and what will the thing you will do first? You will first assess the patient by your own, right? Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's say that, that I will assess the patient by my own first. That is the thing. And you will ask if you are an ST5 is given, if you have you don't you don't know you have another helping hands or not, you can ask, you can tell that meanwhile I'll assessing the first list begin with structuring the these questions first is the assess you will structure like that one is the thing will be the i will be the assessment of the patient and giving the i will be are calling for help I ask the sister or the staff nurse will be there to calling for help and what are the uh, operative notes and what are the management still begins to review these three things you will say first and then you will begin. In the assessment of first, I will check for the airway, breathing, and her circulatory system. 
you then you will say simultaneously that if in her condition why do you think that what our like blood pressure is drop blood pressure is systolic blood pressure is falling this patient all they have said the shock and shock management is uh, going uh, is it uh, fully in the shock phase at moment or just going to be in the shock patient vital pressure is stable but pulse is rising so i yes. can it you is can assume shock. that the patient is going to be shocked. Yeah, that is the thing I wanted to say. Yeah, you have definitely said that they will be sending for blood pressure, uh, blood thing, blood products, and everything for management. That is all right. But I wanted to uh, all of you to organize the questions. It's very important. First, you will assess the patient and ask will be the staff nurse or whoever will be there for help and for reviewing the notes. Remember, there is usually a HTC which will be with you, but it won't be mattered in the examination. So you will be asked them to review the things or review the operative notes. Okay, so if this is the thing, so what is important, they don't want to know how much you know in the management patient. Are you able to work in the NHS system or not? That's the thing they wanted to know. Are you aware of the duties? How will you perform in the real scenario? That is the thing they wanted to know. Put yourself in the real scenario and imagine how will you actually going to manage if you are working at NHS setup, right? Remember, if it is a daytime, your consultant will be usually available. If it's not, uh, your consultant won't be available. You need to inform such a patient immediately to your respective consultant or whoever the consultant of the patient, you have to utter this thing. Okay. So structuring each and every question in the structure discussion is very important. That's why it's the name is structured discussion. It's not only discussion, it's not case discussion. It's not the clinical scenario discussion. It is, has been named structured discussion for a reason. Anjuma, am I clear? Yes, sir. There are some that confusion. Is, uh, as, yeah, yeah. Please patient, go on. What is the confusion? Yeah, please. Patient is in shock, and uh, should I activate at first ABC or should I need to go through the review on notes? And these are the things I, I have already, already told you. The first is the assessment. Okay, what you will say. Sir, I will immediately try to assess the patient and do immediate resuscitative measures and simultaneously ask my staff nurse or to call for help and review the notes and inform the, my respective consultant of this patient. This is the first line you will say. And whenever you say this first line, line immediately your examiner you will understand that she has know how the system works. It okay. is as simple as that. Now, whenever now you have said these three points, now whenever each question, first structure it and then go to the discussion. Then you say that during the assessment, I will check her for the airway breathing. What are the vitals in the multi-channel monitoring is observing if what her pulse rate, respiration rate, SpO2, what is her urine output, and if and how will you do immediately if the airway is problem if sp2 is decreasing i will try to give her oxygen or give her flow oxygen flow meter will be increased and i simultaneously i will put a two bore large bore cannula and during the cannula i will be taking the blood sample simultaneously and start fluid resuscitation also if you have said very details like fluid resuscitation you will start to everything but where is the structured discussion? Okay. okay sir. I don't want to be it's... harsh with you, but I just wanted to know why, because you are uh, giving the exam, right? You should be aware of these things. That's why I asked. Okay. Okay. So next you have think very rightly, this is the interoperative hemorrhage, uh, internal hemorrhage in many, most likely the surgical site hemostasis hasn't been secured like, now, this how you have said, don't give the reason why you are, 
you have told because the pulse rate is uh, increasing, blood pressure is decreasing, that's why it may be, you say it like that. Okay. Don't say like that. Just give the examiner like that. The possible reason for her this condition can be number one, intraoper internal hemorrhage, intraoperitoneal hemorrhage. It can be due to postoperative pain. It can be due to surgical any injury at the surgery site, like ureteric injury or bowel injury. And number four, like to the infection or shock, septic okay. shock. Patient, now give the reason. I think because it is most likely internal hemorrhage because of uh, this now say these things. So I want all of you to have structured discussion. Okay, so then justify why you have given these points. Okay, okay, sir. Yes, so this is how, now when you will prepare yourself for this? Yes, sir. You, how many will prepare this structure of uh, structure? I mean to say, how will you frame or frame out these things? This is the, okay. if you can do it in the two minutes before entering into the cubicle, that's very good. If you can't do in the cubicle, mostly you can see the patient. Uh, sorry, you can see the questions. If you do, can't even see the questions, you can ask or take some time. Uh, uh, trust me, the most of the structure discussion will finish in five to six minutes. It doesn't take more than that. Okay. So you will already have much more time. So Take some time to build up your question, answer and then give it. Nobody will, uh, if we, after asking the question, the exam, if you give your thing in a few seconds, maybe even half a minute, uh, okay. you will, if you take, the examiner won't deduce your mask. If you say the things, what is required, what is the examiner's checklist in there, they can deduce your mask. Remember that thing. Okay. Okay, okay sir. That's very fine. Uh, what are the la uh, next question was? Uh, yeah, uh, it was that what will be the management. You have said the, everything in the management, I think, very nicely, but not in a very unorganized way. You have said everything. I think everything you have said, but very unorganized way. So how will you structure this question? Actually, so they are uh, they are mainly focused in the key for surgery, but the patient may be in some fluid deficit. There may be some dehydration. Yes, yes definitely it can be. Definitely there may be some. Be. I mean, the anaphylactic reaction may be there. One yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be there. I don't deny it. Yeah, okay, so that's why I try to focus all the cause of what I have said. That's why there are three or four causes. Are no, there uh, in any that's kind of management, in, in any kind of management, how will you answer the question? Yes, sir, at any first, kind of post operative management, how will you answer the question? How will actually, you maybe reframe the question? How will you structure the question? That is, I want actually, to know. Sir, but we all know that in management consists of diagnosis. So I thought that we need to go through the re review why we are mm -hmm. post op as it as it is a like common I mean framework that we need to go through the history and exam. That's mm -hmm. why I go through past history mm -hmm. and examination. In these okay, I, I I I am not saying that you are wrong. I am not saying dear you are wrong. Okay, but I am saying that the way you have given the answer. Okay, how so will you reframe it? I just wanted to ask you, how will you reframe such kind of answer? Sir, you, you can say better. Oh, okay. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yes, go on, please. Uh, sir, you um, better, better you, you guide us than how we should frame I this. will definitely guide you, but I want from your part. <laughs> definitely I will give you the answer I will give you the feedback definitely that's not an issue but you have to think of yourself that is the thing if to remember every station is different every station is unique you what, what I felt is uh, felt that when you begin your answer that uh, you will just uh, uh, telling me details of the fluid resuscitation, details of the screening, survey screen. I don't know how came you came there. Uh, 
the things the examiner get to know that the, you are not thinking of the patient, what you have read, what you have practiced, you have just throwing at that thing in the examination. Isn't it, dear? No. Isn't it? So the examiners uh, do get to know what, how what are you doing, how are you thinking. So that's the thing we don't want. We need to, you need to consider every scenario if an unique scenario and don't be a mechanical at all in this examination. Okay. They will assess you in this, especially if the lay examiners are very strict in this regarding. If the lay, if any station is lay examiner point, if you think anything, you have go beyond the what is the things they require. Lay examiners are very strict in this matter. Okay. So in any kind of management, I want you to do is what is still with what you tell that I will be doing the immediate management and the definitive management and the clinical man governance management. Whatever if you are having a urethric injury, if you are having a bowel injury, first tell that I will be do some immediate management and you will be doing a definitive management then we'll be doing a clinical governance management. These three words I want from everyone's mouth whenever discussing about the management. Now, again, structure it. If you're sending in immediate management, what we'll be doing in immediate management, you will be giving fluid resuscitation. You will be sending that for investigations. And what is the most important in here is that the communication with colleague. Who thinks you need to inform in such patients? You need to definitely consult respective consultant has to be informed. If you think another respective department from maybe if it's from bowel injury, then gastrointestinal surgeon, if from urinary injuries, then it's from the urologist. That is the point you will getting from multidisciplinary team management. And what is the more important for this patient? Intensive management care, intensive clinician from anyone from the ITU setup or anything like that. And when you are saying you will be giving, uh, this patient can have a septic shock as well. If septic shock that I fire the discussion with microbiologist, or maybe I, maybe, uh, and remember in the immediate management, you have to utter these things. Immediate management, they will see your knowledge at the applied clinical knowledge and communication with colleague. Okay, and the most importantly, patient safety they will be seeing these three headings in this management of a patient. So we have to give this structured form of answer. Unless you give it, it's very difficult here for you to get through this exam. Now you will come to the end, you come to after the initial resuscitative measure in the patient is stable, you will do her definitive management. If this is a, most likely this patient has an intraoperative bleeding, then what we do? You will do what will do? You will do exploratory laparotomy of this patient. Then secure a blast. Then we'll uh, secure the bleeding point. Now, why do you say reopen like these terms? Don't confuse with the structured discussion with the simulated patient task. You are allowed to use the medical terms in the structured discussion. Use as liberally the medical terms in the structured discussion. They want to see that. Okay. In definitive management, you will say that now in this case, in this case, the, uh, there was the next question was the clinical governance management is there, but sometimes uh, in the structured discussion there won't be a fourth question. There will be a three questions. Uh, the, in that time, you need to include clinical governance management at the end as well. So whenever, please remember whenever you are doing a management. Try to give yourself a few minutes, few seconds to give yourself to think how we'll structure the answer. Uh, Anjuma, are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Which one sounds better? Sir, definitely you, sir. So, I am not saying anything else. You already know everything. Right. Actually, you taught many things, many, many things, actually. But the thing is that the examiners will be getting all the every points or not, and how we will be presenting. Yes, they wanted to see your true. thought process, how you are thinking of this patient. Yes, sir. Okay. 
you are right. This uh, actually exam is a stressful condition. <laughs> what your price there? Yeah. Yes, I I concept definitely I should take care of my condition. Yeah. yeah. Definitely it's a stressful condition, but you have gone through part two. So definitely I think it is a kind of less stressful exam than part two. So I think you can manage yourself well. Uh, but remember, it's very important the day before the exam, you should get enough sleep, uh, enough rest. So you can uh, freely focus on everything. And be careful which domains you are being assessed. Okay. Now, which was the last one in this the clinical governance management so part a few things you need to include is that is you need to inform the patient now in nhs there is a datic system it's a very simple it's like an uh it's a form where you put the patient name what happens when happens like that things you will put and when uh and it will be given into the online and then it will be surveyed or it will be analyzed in the online system also you won't be able to know what has been done after this incident reporting but incident reporting in this patient is very must and it's a patient safety point remember it all it's a clinical governance issue but it's a patient safety point incident reporting for this uh, patient and root cause analysis these two things you have to utter as if you don't you most likely you won't pass in the patient safety point. Now, remember another thing is that the NHS setup, you, uh, there is always a risk manager or risk management team. If it is a very big hospital, tertiary hospital, then it, there will be a team of risk management. And or if it is small setup, trust, small trust, there is a risk manager. Sometimes may not be there. When you are doing an incident form, that will automatically comes the risk management or manager but you you can also inform the risk manager by yourself as well so i want to just all of you to know highlight these points you need to do fill up the datix form you need to inform the risk manager risk protein and the root cause analysis why it has been happened what are the things you can do to prevent while there is any communication is issue as this is was not detected by the doctor team of doctor or team of nurse it her sister has been informed then only uh, the sister um, then only the staff nurse and doctors get to know that is not a good thing in nhs setup and that is not acceptable we should be the one who uh, should be finding out the condition of her heart now wh wh what are the deficiencies why couldn't we identify clearly and before and after the operation was the complete division to the patient and uh, the uh, patient's relative or patient partner has been done or not so in clinical governance risk management root cause analysis incident form reporting and duty of candor and debriefing these five things has to be mentioned it, this can come as a teaching point a teaching station as well okay okay sir okay so i hope i think you have kept some idea about this station and what you need to do and yes, uh, thank you. so at the end of the day how do you even the next time how will you approach i think you have got the idea yes sir thank you sir. so next time you will what will you do now tell me whenever such a session or such a discussion come what will you do actually sir truly speaking um, I find before the start of the 10 minutes, I write, I think I will this thing, tell, I will just say one by one this, but whenever question and answer session starts, everything mess up. So what should I say? I you try to calm to yourself. Her. Don't uh, don't take so much stress. The examiners are there to give you the uh, pass marks. No examiners are there to fail you. Remember that the examiners are very liberal. They are always there to pass you. That is, make your mind set up like that. Examiners are your friends. They are always there to pass you. Okay. They are very I good examiners, that. and they they are very, uh, if. Even role players are also tries to help you. Okay, so if okay. if I remember, just given uh, I'll it will take few minutes. But one in a station, I forget to ask few things. 
But at the end of the day, when I ask, would you like to add some information to this? The patient uh, gives the very vital few information. So role players also tries to help. It's role players and examiners all are there to pass all of you. Nobody is there to fail you. If you don't meet the expectation, this, the standard they have set, only then they will fail you. Otherwise, they won't. Okay. Okay, sir. Inshallah, I'll try, sir. Whatever you have said, and I will I am try sure to you will you try out. this. And whenever next time, I think you will be doing more structured discussion, discussion in a more structured way. Okay. okay. Let's, and remember why the name is structured discussion. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so who will be doing the next station? I need to, someone to volunteer. I want anyone who is trying to give examination that will be better for them. I think all of you have gained something idea or something to more, I hope. So no volunteers. If no volunteers, I will choose someone. So it's better that someone. Anyone? Why am not everyone is responding? It's an interactive session, right? Sakila, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Would you like to go on? <laughs> I don't know. I will try, no problem. Come on, this is the time you should uh, utilize it. You should accept. I think you should embrace such kind of opportunities. Yeah, it's you good, know? but uh, I don't know. I will try, no problem. I will learn, no problem from this. It doesn't matter what you do because in the ex day of the examination, you will do it anyway. That is the thing you should practice yourself and get to know what is the. You should take the feedback. It will help you definitely. Yeah, I think so. so. Even I saw this case also that is more beneficial because when first I saw uh, in the, this case also was written that the urine output was decreased. So I think for the urine retention, but at the end when you explain then uh, really it was amazing internal hemorrhage because of that her urine was decreased. The, look, if you are doing it wrong, it's a more approachable, the approach you need to understand. That is the most important thing. In the next station, in the simulated patient test that is there, you need to understand the approach as well. So uh, or if you are ready, uh, we can begin. Yes, I will try, no, sir, but I don't know. I will ready. I'm ready. Okay, definitely. That's good. That's a, I want to see all of you this confidence. I am ready. Come on. MRCOG party, whatever the station will give, I am ready. That is the confidence I need to see. Okay, so good. Let's begin then. Am I able to see, are, we, are you able to see the station? Yes, 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 sir.
Okay, sir. Uh, you have few more times. Try to utilize it. Okay. Anyway, in the real exam, you have to wait for two minutes. Okay. Uh, 15 seconds are left. Okay, begin. Okay. Hi. My name is Dr. Shakila. I'm the one of the exam candidate here. May I ask for your name and age, please? Uh, yes, doctor. My name is Juliana Smith and I am 46 year old. Okay, how, how may I address you? Uh, you can call Mrs. Smith. Okay, Mrs. Smith. Uh, as I know, today uh, you are here for, uh, uh, first of all, I want to say sorry because of my consultant is busy. So I want to ask you, we we are meeting first time today. Is it okay? Oh, she is a busy again. This is my fifth visit and I still didn't have not met her. It's so sorry because uh, really I'm apologize. In, uh, in, uh, if she is uh, having, she, she wanted to do my operation, why she don't meet with me? Yeah. I didn't want her to go I, with operation with someone who hasn't met with me. Yeah, I can understand your concern, but uh, is it, there is an uh, other emergency. She's busy there. That's why if any query, anything, I'm here to solve everything for you. It's okay for you, Mrs. Simmel? Uh, I guess I have no other options. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Mrs. Smith, again, uh, I want to ask you first of all to address uh, further more. So, I want to ask some uh, uh, question to understand more about your condition. Is it okay for you? Yeah, please go ask me anything if you uh, whatever you would like to ask me. Okay, so Mrs. Smith, can you tell me about uh, uh, what's your main uh, uh, problem that you are going to do for the surgery? Uh, this is kind of why I'm having this bleeding for every month. Whenever my period go, starts, there's so much pain in the lower tummy and this so much bleeding that I need to use so many pads and this medication she was giving me for this last uh, one and a half year is not working at all. What is oh. she doing? I don't understand. I, I am suffering from almost one and a half years. I cannot concentrate in my work. Mm -hmm. Oh, so sorry to hear about this one. I can understand that is uh, affecting your uh, quality of life. So don't worry. So it, uh, this uh, since how long you have uh, this problem? Heavy periods? I had heavy periods for two uh, two years, but since the last one and a half years, it's becoming increasing more and more. And the, for last six months, is uh, the medications you have given to control isn't been working at all. It's affecting my jobs very much. Oh, so sorry to hear about this one. So uh, can you tell me more about uh, that this uh, bleeding also associated some pain? You have uh, some tummy pain? Yeah, some tummy pains are there. But whenever I took the medications you have given, uh, with the medications, usually pain subsides, but bleeding does not stop. Okay. And lots of, I need to use more than around six to seven pads every day, single day of my period. Okay. So, uh, uh, can I ask you more question about your uh, 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 about your uh, pregnancy, previous pregnancies? So, how many baby you have? Uh? I have two kids. 
one is 10 year old and one is uh, eight years old and both was uh, how was the delivery yeah they were fine uh, they were having i did both a vaginal delivery for them no any complication recovery was good yeah it was very good okay so can you tell me more about your what about your uh peps uh, that one uh, screening test Pepsin. sorry i didn't get you uh, uh, uh you are update for your pap smear screening um uh, i think so i think they took some uh, test and they give it to uh, some bottle and they told me it's fine mm -hmm. okay so you do, do you have any medical problem like any uh, blood pressure uh, uh, that one diabetic or any blood disorders no, no, otherwise I'm fit. I don't take any medication other than this problem. Uh, I but this problem is so much worrying, it's affecting my job so much. Yeah, I can understand Mrs. Simeth, and uh, we will try to be solve this problem. So, can you tell me more about it? Uh, you are taking only because uh, uh, medicine only this problem. Do you taking any other medications? No, I don't take any other medication. Are you any allergic to with any medications? Uh, no, I am not allergic to any medication. Mm -hmm. Do you have any previous surgery for your abdomen or down tummy? No, I don't have any surgeries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry to ask you some personal question. Are you smoking? I don't smoke, but few uh, times I do take alcohol occasionally in social occasions. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, uh, do you taking any recreational drugs for fun? No, no never. Okay. Uh, do you have any allergy? No. Or any drugs or any substances? No, not at all. Okay. Do you have any uh, uh, reservation for the blood transfusion? No, I don't. Do I need okay. blood transfusion? Maybe because uh, Mrs. Simat, uh, you are going to the one of the major surgery. That's why sometimes there is the need of a blood transfusion. That's why I should ask the first question this one because we should be cut mm -hmm. much part for you. And uh, that's all I think the history. Uh, last in this is my fifth visit in the last vis last visit to visit that i mean in the third and fourth visit they told me that uh, after doing the scan that in my own there are some masses are there which cannot be removed uh, which need to be removed and this medication may not work so, so what you what uh, today i came here for that purpose and she told me that the the consultant will be meeting with me regarding some upper that I need a surgery and she will be meeting with me. Yeah, Mrs. Smith, as I told you before, my consultant is busy in another emergency, but uh, no problem. I will tell you because that according to your ultrasound, if you to, uh, uh, do you have uh, your uh, ultrasound with you that is can? Uh, yes. The last time what I remember is that the day told me I have multiple small masses throughout my uterus with some changes called adenomyosis in my womb and that my womb need, may need to be removed yes yes because uh, that uh, if they already as you told you already already started the medication and it will be not uh, you are not coping with this medication and still you have a pain heavy bleeding that's why that uh, the definitive treatment but uh is it uh you already uh discussed with your partner is it okay for you because you are going to the this surgery and it will be uh you will be not uh in the future you will not get the pregnancy yes yes i do understand but uh yes my i have discussed with partner but it's so much affecting my job that i am ready to have operation also but I, I, that's why I wanted to today meet with the consultant because I thought she will be doing the surgery. That's why. Don't worry. We will be uh, arranged the appointment with an other surgeon. He is also a very good surgeon for that one same keyhole surgery. We will be do first the keyhole surgery. After that, we will be proceed. If there is uh, any difficulty, then we should, you can, we 
maybe we will be uh, uh, but at the last discussion with uh, uh, what was uh, i was informed that uh, that she may not be doing the this small keyhole surgeries and uh, they may need to open up my tummy and remove my uterus is it so uh yeah but uh, that is the if uh, uh, there's a big uh, your uterus is the big size then it is a difficulty to not to do the keyhole surgery but if uh, 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 it can be then uh, possible for the but, keyhole surgery. Uh, but i heard that the other doctors in the other days the other consultant do this keyhole surgery why she don't why won't she want to do uh, in my case that open surgery yeah, because of that one, your uterus uh, is the big. So there's a chances of uh, keyhole surgery. There's a chances of the more your uh, uh, like uh, other uh, organs will, will be damaged or you will get the more uh, bleeding. That's why she offered you for the open hysterectomy, open um, in surgery for you. Mm -hmm. So how, how will this work? Uh, it, uh, first of all, we, uh, if you are the, uh, will, uh, you will, we will get the consent from you. If you will give the consent, then um, uh, we will be keep on you in the waiting list. And I will try to be as soon as possible. I think I am already in the waiting list for long. Mm, yes. So your um, time is up, but try to <laughs> concise it more. Okay? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so if uh, uh, that one, as you told you, you are already waiting for since long time. So we will be tried to the other hospital and other consultant to... Uh, for the that laparoscopic uh, surgery keyhole surgery mm. sorry doctor now i'm confused in this what shall i okay. do <laughs> oh so i think you have to meet and what have you read it's a only one slide yes so can you read it again Yes, this is ST5 who has been asked to your consultant, Mrs. Smith, and obtained the consent form for the 46 years old mother who has placed her on waiting list for the abdominal hysterectomy. This was her fifth visit for the patient to the clinic. She has very busy clinic and has uh, acceded to the woman's request for the hysterectomy. She does not perform surgery laparoscopically, but there are other consultants uh, hospital who offer the laparoscopic hysterectomy. So what you, does that mean? Mm, means this patient is uh, for the uh, abdominal hysterectomy on the list she kept, but in the other hospital she went and they told they can do she the She does not form laparoscopy, but uh, there are other consultants other in consultants. the hospital mm. who offer, offer laparoscopy. laparoscopy hysterectomy. Yes. How, what does mean the fifth visit? Fifth visit at uh, this one. So how much visit does a require woman require? So you okay, let's uh, I'll get to that. Oh yes. What information do you miss? You miss such chunk of chunk of information from this site only, I think. Yes, sir, because of uh, I will take the more uh, detail about her history in the that uh, in the presenting illness. Did you history. take the more history? In detail, and, that's, uh, you no. have taken associated histories most frequently, but what is the HOPI more detail? Have yeah, you asked I, the I questions should. regarding HOPI history of present illness in more detail? Yes, I should ask the proper uh, that one about the her periods, how is the, but you are already telling all the things. You I have seen. given you much more information, the things you <laughs> haven't asked also I have told you. Yeah, uh, that good, good role that. players will do that, but not necessarily all role players will be good. Okay. Yeah, because you already told you this is a uh, so many times heavy period with clots, with a pain, and this one. That's why I don't want to be repeat the, all the things is already the my yes, definitely. To me. But this was her fifth visit. 
what questions you didn't ask was what was your discussion in the previous visits yeah you I should be that. eyeing this see this simple questions will give all the answers to you what treatments what she has gone through if you ask the questions can you tell me mrs smith in the mm -hmm. previous four visits what uh, discussions have you gone through she will start telling you everything what treatments has she be gone what are the reports has been discussed what mm -hmm. or why she was put in the operation she will start to say everything mm -hmm. it is the thing that you haven't asked the proper question mm -hmm. yes sir because really i uh, i i have no idea about this one we should see us so this is the fifth visit of the patient to the clinic so we should ask why the fifth visit if them they already kept father hysterectomy then kalas the second visit she will come for the indivision and this one but i i didn't focus this one and i really i don't know this thing okay so before i start discussing i wanted to give you a self for redemption of yourself so tell me what are the things you could have done more uh correctfully or more nicely in the focus on the taking the history properly and to see that one main do you uh, know how much time you have taken you have taken almost more than 7 minutes so are you giving the exam in the coming month yes so we should be take within the 4 to 4 4, four minutes na doctor you should ideally should be you should be mm -hmm, yes you have acknowledged that the that is was a good point that you have good acknowledge that the her your consultant has been miss uh, and you have given good nice uh, reference for that as well that she is in emergency ot that's a very good thing uh, but i don't see the the proper history of present information in this in this case you have taken and uh, not to tell you that you have missed a chunk of things regarding patient safety colleague and communication with the colleague and also using applied clinical knowledge you yes. haven't asked the patient by yourself what the treat what ill treatments have been gone through what ill treatment option has been she has been provided it has already been to please confirm whenever the patient is for in a waiting list please confirm that why she is in the waiting list review her case notes confirm that the uh, that why what are the why she is in the waiting list but dr rana i want to ask you one thing is uh, uh, when taking history is our role player will tell us that i i tried all the medication then we should ask the each and everything so which medication you tried you can try role players are very knowledgeable people don't worry mm -hmm. if you ask the role player if you asked could ask this role player she would have nicely said that she was taking some medication during her periods 5 to 7 mm -hmm. days our periods and also taking us some hormonal pill mm -hmm. yeah she would definitely say that and also she would say that if you ask that she that the doctor has told me to put some device in my womb but uh, uh, option also but later she, uh, they refused it because they told me it i am not a suitable candidate for it yeah if yeah. you are her she would told that also yeah okay Uh, actually you have been asked many things but uh, in the i told you that the start to tell you that before is this is fifth visit but before in the third and fourth visit i was given these and these options also surgery options are giving yes. mm -hmm. uh, whenever role players throwing you something you should catch it also mm -hmm. if you okay. don't catch it that is a very blunder so i should we should ask you the patient like they, did they offer you the uh, like uh, yeah the role player device like marine as you okay. haven't asked role player yeah. start to say uh, by herself that uh, that the, they offered me this because of that then then you should ask what ill anything else has been discussed or anything else you are like to tell me yes so uh, and what is you have an important a very important thing you haven't asked what do you think that is anyone from the audience what important thing she has a, a very important thing first of all uh, she didn't ask about the what treatment he has taken so far 
and uh, what uh, whether she has any future fertility plan yes very good another yes you have, you have asked yeah another thing you have very close to it another thing what she hasn't asked she has asked for future fertility another thing very close to that last uh, last period yes and uh, pregnancy uh, test she has contraception, contraception in endometrial sampling should be asked uh yes and what you have at cervical screening do they use pap smear regularly yeah, cervical screening. I I forget that word, uh, sir. Only. <laughs> no, the role player won't I'm be saying that the me. samples is given in a bottle. The role player won't yeah, be saying that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I forget the screening. What about your last screening? That's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm telling and Pap Smear, Pap Smear. That is old. Also, you should. Mm -hmm. We should ask about the Smear and uh, that one is screening. In a communication, you have missed a very big information. Yes. What is the what is the thing you have informed? That's why I'm asking you. If anyone from the audience, the page role player has repeated two to three times that thing. Anita? Still you have missed. Yes, kind of she has been tired, but that's not I am asking. That's the patient safety point and the patient communication point. Or consent? No, no. About blood transfusion. About blood transfusion. Yes, ask asked that. She has, yeah. I asked blood transfusion. I asked the consent. Yeah, she has asked. I am telling you the what the thing has very important thing. A role fair has been repeated two to three times. She has acknowledged that, but she didn't address it. Mm. Role player has time and again uh, told that it is affecting her job very, very much. Did you have ever asked what jobs she does? Yeah, 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 sir. It's a very much important. I didn't ask what you are doing for the living, what you are doing for the your current job. Yeah. She is telling she is a very busy woman. It's affecting her job very much. If we so had told that she would she would say uh, uh, that she is a consulate okay so she is a she is a very good lady and she also you need to ask if she will undergo a surgery or uh, and she has a two kids who will support her in this condition who will take yes. care of her children what's the empathetic points where everything is vanished from your history taking yes this points are very important whenever you are considering for a pa patient for surgery have you taken history for any family history have you taken history for thr thromboembolism any blood depleting disorder in her family doctor she, i asked posting... about herself but not ask for the family family history disorders. if yes. you would have told her I mean... that she, she will if you ask that she will tell that her mother has died after an uh, uh surgery uh, uh, after an ovarian tumor surgery yes you have asked that she would have told that if you have asked that so in this information another thing you needed to add during the operation surgery because she is around 46 years she will be doing what extra in her case reducing selping of selping will be doing right yes so th this you have missed such a such a information in these patients. So, mm, yes. so let's uh, just begin to draw jump to the, our discussions. I think I have given you what things you have missed not to mention that you ha haven't showed your clinical knowledge in this station. Okay. So whenever you remember this thing starts your examination starts when your examination starts outside the cubicle in the you have to consider 12 minutes of your examination not only the 10 minutes the two minutes you are outside the cubicle is very important remember you should organize yourself this examination is all about organizing structuring yourself what questions need to ask, what things, information I need to take it out and the information the role player will give, how will I process it? 
these things you need to be very very careful whenever you are entering in the cubicle just think of what is the things i need to ask this patient this is her fifth visit have you asked for any review or not what has been discussed previously you should discuss first of all you need to you have acknowledged it that the she is in waiting list it's very good she you are acknowledged again with a very good excuse that her consultant has been but when her surgery will happen how long she need to wait you haven't mentioned it okay let's begin you have you have confirmed you have asked for the symptoms that very good but you haven't asked regarding what treatments she has been gone through whether the options for other treatments has been given to her or not in previous discussion as she has been waiting for surgery whether the other options like as i already told you if you had asked for my or anything she would have told that the doctor in previous discussion has told that it wasn't fit for her suitable condition already you haven't excluded the pregnancy and this is a patient safety point yes if you are posting for a surgery in a pre perimenopausal or premenopausal women uh, you have to exclude a pregnancy that is the okay. patient safety point and they won't forgive for this sorry yes. to be very harsh to you uh, but, but these this things won't be for forgotten me. i'm not telling harsh yeah. this is very yeah. good for me. no it's no it's okay but i need to say you uh, to you okay and you haven't asked for any things that could have contradicted her surgery like what can contradict her surgery tell me what are the things can be contradiction of surgery and what are the things contradiction for laparoscopic surgery for her this case Sorry, sir. Please. Sorry. Sorry what sir? are the contraindication for her surgery would have been in her case? Uh, that laparoscopic surgery are uh, open. Tell me first what are the contraindication will be for her hysterectomy. Uh, if she has previous surgeries. That will be previous surgery. That will be a contraindication for hysterectomy. No, I couldn't get your answer, doctor. Uh, question, oh, doctor. Uh, what will be the contraindication for her cases for hysterectomy what are the contraindication for hysterectomy it doesn't matter what type of hysterectomy what is the contraindication of hysterectomy if she is not medically fit if she is anemic mm -hmm. and um, uh, for uh, laparoscopic if there's a big mass then laparoscopic no no please uh, please please do this first one you need to exclude her pregnancy you have to do one thing yeah, you have with the, the family yeah, yeah. yeah. she you haven't anemia. ruled out she is currently pregnant or not you haven't yeah. asked her last lmp last yes. period of month you have asked for cervical screening you haven't asked for few uh history of any ovarian tumor or anything in the family history that has you missed or whether there is need to do a endometrial sampling for her case or not yeah you're getting my point yes yes sir. these things you need to ask and in her case what is the very important is that the this particular consultant was doing the uh, laparoscopic surgery but other consultants are doing so if the patient wishes or express herself uh they that what how should you say it we should respect her uh, decision that if she want to the laparoscopic surgery so we will be uh, referred to the uh, surgeon that are doing the laparoscopic yes that is the thing i wanted to know if you wish to have go the keyhole surgery we will gladly refer you to the another consultant yes okay there is no shy to that accept that some if some consultant are not able to do laparoscopic total laparoscopic treatment that is no you should accept it and tell the patient that is nothing wrong with telling the uh, in giving the information away or referring to the patient to the other consultant you should respect the whatever the patient is wishing as i told you already uh, in the and what are the contraindication for laparoscopic hysterectomy is our condition is a contraindication that is the uh, thing the approach i am telling you 
you need to find out the contradiction of hysterectomy whether it's present or not and uh, find out also the contradiction for the laparoscopic hysterectomy present in not you need to gather those information from her and this thought process should start from the outside of your cubicle yes okay now when you cannot do if it is a very large uterus very big yes. fibroid that's in Mid those cases surgery. you may not yeah in those cases may not do but it depends on the surgeon or consultant also and you should uh, give her an option to consult with another consultant okay in the nhs system they you cannot refer her condition as the uh, to the other hospital as you said but but you can always refer her to the other consultant okay and Please confirm whether she has been given any other options for her bleeding or not, like transcervical section of endometrium or not, or maybe max boost or anything other. Or please just confirm it. Now I have given you a very simple uh, way to ask it. What are were the discussion you had in previous visits? This is a very simple way I used to ask. Now you can ask in your way also, but you need to, this is a big station, you need to cover many things, but you should not forget about communication with the patient and communication with the colleague and the patient safety fine. In information gathering, they are very liberal uh, if you forget, but with these three domains, you would need to be very careful. Okay, dear. Yes, 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 sir. Okay, and the very important thing whenever you're dealing with uh, operative things, what kind of operation it is, please uh, address them. What are the alternatives of it? What are the operations will, will happen? And what will happen if we don't do the operation? Okay, giving a not treatment will what will happen to her, this patient? She is very eagerly ready for, she is in the waiting list. She is ready to have a surgery as she is, uh, that is affecting her job. To her, her job is very much important, right? She is a consulate. So her job is very important. You should ask also her husband, what her spouse do? If you ask as her spouse do, uh, she will tell that her spouse is a banker. Okay. So this kind of things for who will support this communication with the patient is very important. And the doctor, in job is yes. what? Uh, why we ask to the husband job? Two things: uh, who will be taking care of her in her condition? Okay, mm -hmm. who how, who will take care of her children during that time? That okay. thing we ask, but husband and job also. Yeah, uh, because in this uh, patient, she is a this, this is a role that they have to be given. Because, but it is very important to ask because husband job sometimes she is, has been waiting for this is her fifth visit. Waiting in the UK, there are two type of services. One is NHS services, but like the station has been going on, and you can also give her option for private funding also. But you need you should not say that yourself. You can if the patient asks, you should acknowledge her and respect her that you if you yes, if the if you said that it, this patient, I am telling how will it go on? If you had uh, the patient, if you uh, say that the, you are in the waiting list, if the station is go on further, I would have asked you how long I need to wait. She would tell you that you need to wait. If you were told that the you need to wait a few months, then I would have asked you, can I go to the private funding hospital if it is taking much more? Then you need to address that concern of the financial burden. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Luckily, this station hasn't gone that far, but it can go on. This is a long station, I understand, but uh, nobody, if you judge you, if you stop prematurely, but you need to cons uh, serve certain things you need to uh, cover. That is the most important thing. Because as an examiner, we'll be having only a few points to check. 
if you cover all those things, we have to give you full marks. And some station will be there are very long stations. Okay, especially the maternal medicine ones is very difficult to finish. I think all of you have done it. Okay. Thank you so much. No, I haven't finished yet, but uh, yes, you have been, uh, please in the colleagues, you have to, in the NHS, there is a waiting list team as well. Usually these are in the tertiary center, like in Sheffield center or any guys and Thompson center like that. Uh, usually there, any high volume centers, there will be a waiting list center. And when the patient asks how long I need to wait, just say that you need to wait, maybe you need to wait, but I will get back to you with discussing with my, our waiting list team of surgery. Okay, that's it. And such patients, uh, don't forget to give the patient information leaflet and patient consent form. These are the very important patient safety point. Uh, you haven't gone up to that point, I can understand. But uh, to the audience, I am telling you, don't forget these things in any operative cases. Don't forget about patient consent and validating that consent and to give patient information leaflet and always communicate with the anesthetic team. Anesthetic fitness for fitness sent her to the team. Okay. So it was a lot of things to give in this station. I can understand this station. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. So are you able to get till now? Yes. So uh, I think later on you can do better than this. Yeah. And always try to keep a back of your mind the time management thing also. Because yes. if you can cover the history, history of present illness within four to five minutes, it will be very easier. Okay. Yes. So just on, so those who are giving the exam in the coming month, uh, after assessing you two, I think you did two guys, both of you need to push yourself a little bit up because it is the time. Yes, it is a very doable exam and uh, no need to be a bit panic. Try to just try to organize yourself. That is the most important thing because I think uh, both of you have done pretty well. Just need to organize your things and give us more structure way the information and more structure way try to ask the questions also. The first station I have asked that you should answer your all the questions more structurally. The second station, the message I wanted to give you that everything you need to ask more structurally Am I making sense to all of you? Yes, sir. That's it. So I think, hope you have both have done very nicely and but lots of work needs to be done also. Yes, sir, I will try my best. Okay. Okay, so best of luck for both of all of you for the coming month exam. And if anyone wanted to have with our team or any of team our, me or any of our team member as a mock session, we will be coming up in the next uh, week with the mock practice session also. Uh, this mock station will be helping you in a two different way mainly. I think there's a something of both of your that confidence is lacking. The, I think it will come only after practicing much more session. I don't know the rest of you guys, but the organization needs to be done. And you have to have to imagine yourself as in a real scenario, what will you will be doing. Only then you can go ahead with the thing. 
so try to ask more realistic questions and do practice it's better to practice with any of your friends or those who are preparing with yourself you can find any of partner in the telegram group or whatsapp group and try to communicate with them and it do with practice to come the confidence and also you need to focus on the what the gaps you're having that is a very important thing also and efficient time managing is another crucial thing for the part three examination if you can cover the all the points the examiners have in their in her or his checklist you won't be able to pass it so time management is very much important and if the more you practice you will get more familiarized with the exams and exam system and that will reduce also reduce your anxiety so if if any of you wish to have a mock session with me or more interactive session with me please contact with the mate exam team i hope and all the uh, best wishes to all of you those who are giving mrcpi part three examination and part three mrcoj examination and i'll be waiting to hear the good news from all of you because that is the last step you need to clear thank you everyone so those two who have done the session with me i think the doing the station you won't be losing everything either you win or you have learned something isn't it yes sir. i learned okay but you need to reflect it also now it's time also so in future we will be i think we'll be having more session also like this okay okay thank you sir thank you thank you everyone